uh, coming to you from our Eros Park studios in the capital, Vinduk. This is the third installment of Primetime News. Good evening to our global audience and many thanks for making a date with me for the next 20 minutes. As we unpack the stories behind the headlines, I'm Michael Madimba. It was day three of three and the curtain fell on the Global African Hydrogen Summit in Vinduk. The summit headlines tonight's bulletin. Namibia's Green Hydrogen Commissioner James Munupe in an interview with Primetime News on the sidelines of the summit stated that the Global African Green Hydrogen Summit aims to enhance understanding and engagement among Namibians, strengthen relations with neighboring countries as well as foster dialogue between the government and the public. Our producer Josefina Simeon produced our lead story. Look, the aim for this summit was really to showcase what other countries are, around Africa are doing with regards to trying to create a new industrial ecosystem, right? So the world has really sort of said we need to combat climate change and reduce essentially the emissions that are associated with producing a variety of goods around the world. Renewable energy is an important component of that and so is green hydrogen. And so Namibia was recognized as a potential thought leader in this space, but we really say let's invite other African countries together with countries from around the world to showcase what they're doing as well so that we can learn from Egypt, Morocco, Mauritania, and they can learn from us, and importantly, so we can engage the world on this subject matter as one continent. My desired outcomes is just to increase the knowledge and appreciation of our people in Namibia, to deepen the ties and friendships between us and our neighbors, and then to really uh, increase the dialogue that government is going to have with the people of Namibia, with civil society organizations, with our community, with members of the public so that as we look to craft this new industrial cluster it's not just a top-down idea but it is a bottom-up um, base of a structure that we want to build together so I'm hoping the summit will help kickstart fire up and improve that dialogue with our people because we cannot do that we cannot do this industrialization without their permission to be honest a spokesperson of the Electoral Commission of Namibia, Divert Suluka, earlier today confirmed to Primetime News the Vinduk High Court has set aside its decision to deregister the Namibia Economic Freedom Fighters, or NIF. Judge Thomas Masuku made the ruling. This, according to the High Court verdict, means the party remains validly registered in Namibia and can participate in the upcoming presidential and national assembly elections scheduled for November this year. The party was deregistered in June after it allegedly failed to properly account for its books. The ECN also deregistered the Christian Democratic Voice. A switch in attention to happenings in the National Council. A member of the National Council, Sebastian Gobbs, during his contribution to the resumption of a special session, raised concerns about the challenges men face under the proposed divorce bill. Now, the bill aims to consolidate and reform divorce laws for civil marriages, abolish common law grounds for divorce, as well as address issues such as custody, spousal maintenance, annulment consequences for feature of patrimonial benefits, privacy of court proceedings, as well as judicial separation. Let's have a listen. Upon the divorce, if, if the di divorce is handled by the competent uh, court, most of the time, the husbands are the ones on the losing side, as the wives claims most of the assets, including the custodianship of the children. And it is very much painful, honorable chairperson, honorable members, when the court orders for the sale of assets, mostly immovable assets, in this case, a matrimonial house, as the previous speaker was also saying, then you have to start from the scratch. Either the, the, the wife or the husband will start from the scratch to have another house to stay in because this house has been sold and the money must be divided amongst them or somebody take a bigger portion. So uh, with these uh, few submissions, I, 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 I raise my case. Moving on, Prosecutor General Martha Imalwa has lodged an appeal in the Supreme Court contesting a High Court ruling that granted former Fisheries and Marine Resources Minister Bennett Esso access to his frozen assets. 
The order permits ESO to use funds from its frozen accounts to pay for legal representation. Our producer Josephina Simeon brings you this report. Lawyer Florine Biekes informed the presiding judge, Moses Shin Hengo, that his client would be joining former Justice Minister Sakie Shangala in an application seeking to separate him, James Hachikulipi, and Pius Mutelulo from the main criminal trial until they can secure legal representation. Beak has indicated that he has been representing Esau for free over the past three years and is now in a difficult position due to Imalwa's appeal in the Supreme Court. Are you continuing to represent Mr. Esau pro bono in respect of the, of the application for separation of trial? Not pro bono, my lord. I'm just representing him in that application. Pro bono would imply that I would not be able to even get payment at the end. He stated that he would continue to represent Esau on a pro bono basis, but is uncertain whether he will withdraw as his lawyer in the main criminal trial. So what are you saying? In respect of the main trial, you will withdraw? Yes, my lord. But I will not withdraw immediately. What I intend to do is, I will obviously have to withdraw at the end of the day, my lord. But for the purposes of the separation application, I'm in a position to assist Mr. Yesa. In July, Judge Beatrix de Yacher ordered that 3.5 million Namibia dollars be released from Esau's frozen assets to pay for future and outstanding legal fees. The money was to be paid into the Metcalf Beakers attorney's account. Judge Shin Hango has scheduled the hearing for 13th September 2024. Stay tuned for your tool round up with the business segment thereafter. Time business segment, the slot encapsulating business and economics. Kickstarting the segment, Vice President Netumbo Nandi Ndaitwa has underscored the importance of balance in economic development with ecological preservation as Namibia's green economy expands. Speaking at the first Global African Hydrogen Summit in Vinduk, Nandi Ndaitwa said, like all industrial endeavors of significant scale, careful attention needs to be paid to the green economy's potential impact on Namibia's flora and fauna. According to our recently launched Green Industrialization Blueprint, those sustainable new industries complexity may offer compelling opportunities to create new jobs, diversify our economy, econom diversify our economic output, and even augment our electricity and clean water production. However, like all other industrial complexes, our significant scale careful attention needs to be paid to their potential footprint on our precious for flora and fauna. Environmental is very fundamental. Environmental protection is very fundamental in Namibia. We are conscious that the transition should be done in a manner that it does not have a negative impact on the African continent, which is still at the level of developing. Aranda's constituency councillor and chief person of the Irongo Regional Council Management Committee, 
Benita Imbamba pointed out the need to fund upcoming businesses for them to develop into well-established businesses. Imbamba was speaking at the handing over of equipment and materials to 24 local small and medium enterprises or SMEs in Arandas, noted that this sector is the backbone of the economy, hence requires support. SME is the big bone of our economy and it is imperative to assist SMEs, particularly through constituency development fund, for them to gradually develop in a well-established allied businesses one day. I believe that every small step will lead to a giant step, as Rome was not built in one day. Our government is trying its utmost best to eradicate poverty and therefore can introduce NDP-5 in Harambe Prosperity Plan, whereby economic progression is emphasized as one of the pillars. It is through these funds that we are able to hand over valuable equipment to well-deserving beneficiaries today. Let's now consult with the Meteorological Service for Friday's Countrywide Weather Forecast. Catch Sport Planet on the other side.
Welcome to Sport Planet, the segment dedicated to all things sport in action. Springbok captain Sio Kalise will lead a starting team with five changes and two positional switches in the Rugby Championship clash against the New Zealand All Blacks at the Cape Town Stadium on Saturday. Experienced fullback Willie LaRue and fly half Andre Pollard returned to the team announced by South African coach Rassi Erasmus earlier today. There was speculation that Kalisi would be forced out after suffering a cheek injury in the first clash between the Southern Hemisphere Giants, which South Africa won 31-27 in Johannesburg last Saturday. Meanwhile, Bowden Barrett and TJ Perinara were benched as New Zealand made five changes earlier today to their starting lineup for Saturday's Rugby Championship Test against South Africa. All Blacks head coach Scott Robertson reacted to last weekend's 31-27 defeat in Johannesburg by bringing in Cortez Retima for Perinara at scrum off and moving Will Jordan to fullback in place of Barrett for the second match against the Springboks in Cape Town. Stand by for your sports roundup. This is where we dock for the night. It's been a pleasure having you. Another primetime news edition awaits tomorrow as we wrap up the week. And do make sure you catch me same place and time. A parting reminder to follow the on-screen prompts to ensure you keep abreast with developments shaping the Namibian continental and global narratives. Till tomorrow, it's good night.